Hello YouTube, XCT here. Today we are going to solve another Active Directory machine on VanLab called Baby2. We'll go over lock-on scripts, exploit an ACL to take control of an AD object and use shadow credentials to backdoor an account. Finally, we'll use a GPO to escalate privileges. Alright, so by the port scan we can tell that this is a domain controller. And the first thing I want to do is just check if there are any shares we will be able to list. So let's do SMB client here. And we can see there are a couple of shares. Um, usually you need an account to list them. So the fact that we can do it anonymously is already a misconfiguration. Um, all right, let's try to see if we can connect to any of the shares here. Let's try homes. Okay, we can read the share. Um, we could like look through the folders, but I know they're empty, so I'm not doing it. Um, but this is interesting. It gives us a couple of usernames here. Um, and these are probably the home directories of the users. All right, let's actually take these and try to like make a list from them. So we go to this file, um, can copy them here, just like we just saw the listing. And then what we can do is um, cut this file. Let's do it like this. And we get just the usernames and now we can use them to like spray against the domain or something like that um, that's exactly what i'm going to do so we're going to use crack map exec on this list we just did via smb um, so we take this as the username list and also at the password list so we can just try if the if any of the users used um, his username as the password we have to give it the no Rufus flag here, otherwise it would like also try Carl Moore as a password for Amelia Griffiths, for example. And of course, continue on success because I would, otherwise it would just stop um, if it finds something. All right. And we got two hits here. Um, there's Carl Moore, which has the same username as password and also this library account here. All right. So let's check if this account actually works. So do it like this SMB client and just like try to connect to the syswall share. This is usually not allowed. Like if I give a random password, it says logon failure. But if I give library here as a password, we can connect. And now we are on the syswall share. All right, let's go to the domain. And there's a scripts folder here, which is fairly common on syswall shares. And there's a logon script here. So let's grab this logon script and actually see what it's like. So there's this function here which maps a network share and we can see that the script basically maps two shares, um, the drive letter V and L and it's mapping apps and docs. Okay, so this is not that uncommon, just lock on script exists in most domains. Um, the question is if you can like do anything with it. Um, and just to confirm that it's actually a log on script that's configured on the user account, we are going to do a bloodhound to um, basically see if the script is configured for the users. So I'm going to do um, the crap exact version of bloodhound. So we do CME LDAP, um, give it the host name, then of course user and password as library. And well, we give it the dash dash bloodhound here with C all to collect the bloodhound data, just like this. And this works. And by default, this puts it here into the .cme folder and the home folder. I don't like that, so I'm just going to move it here. And then I'm going to load it into Bloodhound. All right, let's now look at the user we got here, which is library. And this user doesn't seem to have anything special and also no logon script. Um, let's look at outbound control. I always like to look at that. It's also like nothing here, right? Um, another thing we can do is just go for domain users, see if any other users have it set. Let's go for the members here. And then there's, let's just go for the first one here, Amelia Griffiths. Um, first of all, this user can RDP into the DC, which is pretty interesting. Um, other than that, the user has a home directory, which is actually on the share. So the, the homes we saw are actually used. Um, and also there's a lock on script configured here, which is on syswall and it's the script we just saw. All right, so 
what's happening is that every time a user logs in, the script is being executed. So it would be really nice if we could write a script. So let's try if we can actually do that. Um, first of all, we have the script here. And let's say we can write it. We can, we can check it in a second. Um, what would we want to add here? Well, we essentially just want to like grab a script of our box and run it. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, so let's just put it here. Um, the way you can do this is basically we do create object um, wscript.shell. Then we can just run a system command. So we use PowerShell to download run.txt from our machine and just use ix to execute it. All right. So let's try if we can actually write that. So let's connect to this as well with library. All right, go to scripts and then see if we can remove that. And it's gone. So let's try if we can put it here. And now we replace it. Now we gotta be fast to like spawn a listener here. Um, oh, I forgot the NC. All right, listener is running. Um, yeah, and if everything works, it will grab this run.txt from my machine. And well, in this file, there's just a PowerShell reverse shell, just like this. It's a typical, yeah, PowerShell reverse shell one line, all right. All right, while we're waiting, um, there's also like a hint here. Like if you do, uh, if you just go to, I think it's apps, we can connect anonymously. And then there's dev here. And basically here, there's a link to the logon script. So you kind of get pointed in the right direction. But yeah, it seems we got our shell here. Let's do a who am I? And we're actually Amelia Griffiths. This is like the user we just had here. So this user is allowed to RDP to the machine, but we don't have credentials at this point. So we can't really do that. All right. So maybe let's check who am I all and then see if there's anything interesting here. And there seem to be like two non-default groups, I'd say. There's the office group and the legacy group. So let's check out these, like maybe they have special permissions because this is like the path to high value targets. Um, but the thing with that is if it finds like an edge, it's really sure about like this RDP here, um, it won't show the other edges in reachable high value targets anymore. So you can't really see other paths. So you can just look for the group here for office and then see if there's anything outbound here that's interesting. Well, there isn't. Let's check legacy. Go here. And legacy actually has some interesting things going on here. All right, so this group has right Dackel on GPO management and also on the GPO ADM account. Um, what does this mean? Well, we can, for example, set the owner. So we can become an owner of this OU or this user. And if we are the owner, we can well basically change everything about it. Well, and then in turn, this GPO ADM account has generic all on the default domain controller policy and the default domain policy. So if you have control over this account, we can actually modify these policies and therefore basically do anything with them. We can like create a scheduled task on a domain controller, um, for example, that makes us a user or creates a reverse shell. So the, the full attack path is basically clear at this point. We just have to figure out how to do it. Um, let's start with the first thing, which is basically um, putting ourselves as the owner of this um, OU or account, right? So first of all, let's check who is the owner of the GPO ADM account right now. And it's domain admins. We didn't really change anything. So this is like to be expected, right? So at this point, let's just make like a temp directory, go there because we got to upload a couple of files and grab PowerView from our machine. All right. Um, let's actually import it and then we can set ourselves as the owner of the account just by using set a domain object owner identity is GPO ADM of course and who is supposed to be the owner which is us all right so now if we run this command again which we just did 
it should actually show us as the owner. Better confirm it. Yes, we are the owner now. Okay, as we are the owner, we can add ACLs to the account. And one ACL we can add is generic all, which is like the, the, the one with the most permissions. Um, so let's use that one. Just like this, we use add domain object ACL, put the principal identity of the account um, who has to control, um, target, well, who's to be controlled, it's GPU ADM, of course. And now we have generic all on the account. Um, with generic all, we could, in theory, change the password of the user, um, which is okay in a lab, but um, or at least in a non-shared lab. But we want to do it a bit differently. We want to add shadow credentials to the user, um, which acts like kind of a backdoor, and we get access to the account without changing the password, so it's less invasive. Um, you can do that from Linux or Windows. We are going to use Windows here. So I'm just going to grab um, whisker.exe from my machine which is the, the Windows version, the original, I guess, from PyWhisker. Um, let's see, yeah, we got the tool here. So what we do now is basically add the shadow credentials, um, which you do with Whisker add. Um, of course, the target domain, should everything be clear here, right? Um, then where we want to store the certificate that's being generated and which kind of like passphrase you want to use for it. All right, let's look at the output. Um, it generated the key credential and it edited it. And the certificate was saved where we taught it to save it, right? And it's even telling us like what command to run now um, to get a TGT. And this will also, because to get credentials flag, I think, print the NT hash of the account. We gotta grab Rubius here because we don't have it locally yet. Then we just run the command it told us to. And this seems to have worked. Let's check the output. Yes, we got a TGT and it also got us the NT hash. So now without changing the um, password of the account, we basically have access to it with a TGT, but we also got the NT hash, so we can now pass the hash. Um, let's check if this actually works now, um, just to confirm it, right? We do um, CME, um, SMB, and basically check just if username and password is correct. And indeed, this seems to be true. All right. So now that we have access over this account, um, what can we actually do with it? Well, we learned here in Bloodhound that this account has generic all over the um, GPOs, right? So we can modify one to do something we want. Um, one tool we can use for this is PyGPO Abuse, um, which is like basically doing all the hard work for us. It's modifying the, the GPO to create a scheduled task and then executing a command. Let's do this here. I have a virtual environment for, for this tool um, because Python tends to break a lot. Um, the first thing we need though is um, we need um, a GPO ID of the GPO we want to modify. Um, luckily PowerShell can do this. So we can just do get GPO um, dash all and it will list us the GPOs that exist, which is just two, the default ones. Um, so we can use any of these, right, and, and just modify them. I'm going to use that one here. And then we go to the tool directory again. We run it um, with the account VP of as GPO ADM, right? Then we give the ID we just copied. Um, and if you don't give it any other parameters, this will actually add a user, um, like an admin user on the DC. Obviously for, for real life, this is not like great, right? You don't want to do that, but you can also like put another command there to just um, execute like a reverse shell or something like that. But for, for here, because it's a lab, I'm just like going to, to add the account. Um, okay, so this is going to take a while. Um, a, a way to like speed this up a bit is just um, run gp update um, slash force here. This will essentially apply the GPOs to the machine and to show that our account. So after that, we should be able to um, connect to the machine with the account that was added. And like, if you go to the GitHub page, it tells you which username and password it creates by default. So now we just use that like this, right? It tells something on the GitHub page. I'm not going to show it now. You can look it up. That's like the password and the user adds. Let me see if this is the correct IP. No, I think it's not. Um, let's do this one. Uh, 
And yeah, we are connected to the DC. Let's check who am I all. And we are an administrator. And now obviously we can like read the flags and they're basically done. So that's it for the machine. Uh, we essentially got access to a share, found usernames, um, sprayed username equals password, found a user, exit the syswall share and found that we can overwrite the login script. We overwrote it, we got a shell, we looked at ACLs and found that we can take control over an account via shadow credentials. Um, we did it and then we used the account to modify a GPO to add a user to the domain controller that gives us admin privileges on it. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.